Alrighty, time for the review. This review will probably be pretty quick, considering the fact that I've already talked about some um, stuff. So here's my deal. When it comes to my reviews of games, I assume, and I mention this because of, I actually know of at least one viewer who watched my review, but like not any my actual playthrough. Um, so I feel the need to preface it with this, because they, they said, there's so much you left out. Here's the thing. I did a playthrough on this game. I assume that if you've seen my review, that you've also seen my playthrough. Because I critique or praise the game as I go along. And I see no point in repeating myself. If, I, if I've already praised or critiqued a certain aspect of it, then I don't care to repeat that in the review. So that's why. That being said, uh, that's also part of the reason why this probably won't be very long. So I will grant this in terms of presentation slash atmosphere, in terms of narrative, and in terms of gameplay. Let me say right out, so I'll go ahead and start with the gameplay, because that'll be the easiest one to be. So, and it's probably the contentious one too, a lot of, there are people who do not like this game. Why? Because of the stealth aspect of it, because basically you're not empowered, right? Because most games, you feel empowered. And even games like Metal Gear Solid, where the point is still stealth, you still feel empowered. But here, you feel helpless on most of the game, which you do. Here's a, and there are people who don't like that, there are people who bitch about that. Here's my two cents on it though. Of course! Dude, you're playing as a 15 year old girl who was royalty, so she's never, aside from hunting with a dog, she's never had to do anything crazy in her life and a five-year-old boy who's sickly. Like, of course any video game could pull shit out of its asshole and sit there and say, you know, oh, she's a bad Alice all of a sudden, right? Games do it all the time. You, you, like, like, take Lara Croft in Tomb Raider 2013. You have a girl who is an adventurer, but has never killed anybody in her life. She kills a guy, and then two seconds later, she's a mass murderer, basically. Same with Nathan Drake in Uncharted. While it is cool to do that presentation-wise, it's not realistic in the slightest. Now, everybody knows that. People fuck with it. People fuck with the that with Tomb Raider 2013 all the time about that. Fuck, I did a playthrough of it on my own, and I fuck with it about that. But this makes it more realistic, though. Because you can kill people, but with a, with a rock part of it. The general premise of this game, the gameplay, I'm fine with. The, the stealth part of it. Um, because it makes sense. I mean, honestly, like, I'm in my 20s, but like, I'm, I'm what you might refer to as an average competent adult. But even for me, if I was with like a 15 year old, a 20 year old, whatever like that, right? If I was like a split, small group of people in a place like this, if I wasn't armed with a goddamn gun, actually even then I'd probably still need a silencer because guns are allowed. If I wasn't armed with like a gun or something like that, I would, I would be stealthy too. I wouldn't want to fucking fight every motherfucker I see. You kidding me? Like, I even if I had a gun, I would use that shit as last resort. So like, I'm saying, like, it's more realistic this way. That now, I mentioned towards the beginning that the stealth is very bare bones, and I get that. Um, they did add mechanics to be able to deal with enemies better, and that did make the gameplay more compelling. Straight up, it did. But that only goes... But my, here's my issue then. I do, I do, despite me just defending the game from other criticism, here's my criticism about it. The stealth itself stays bare bones throughout the whole game. The only improvements whatsoever are how to handle the rats and how to handle enemies. It gives you Ignifer, Extinguish, all this shit. It gives you the sleeping potion shit. It gives you, you know... But like, all these things either deal with how to kill or distract enemies or either deal with fire slash light which deals directly with the rats. But at no point did it improve on the stealth itself. And that's, that's one of this game's biggest shortcomings to me overall in the actual gameplay. Like, Shadow of the Tomb Raider isn't even about stealth. Shadow of the Tomb Raider had far better stealth mechanics than this game did. Like, they should have, like, they should have let her, Amicia, like, cover herself and, like, and like well, whatever, like, like, they should have let them, there should have been more stealth options as my main graph about this game overall. Um, 
so that's the combat though, the stealth, which is so basic. That's basically my encounter stuff, right? So I'm I can't give this game any direct praise per se, but I will give it my own crit criticism, and I will and I've defended it from other people's criticism. So that's that's as far as encounters and combat goes. But that's all the game. So what about the rest of the gameplay? Well, in all honesty, there's not much to the rest of this gameplay. It's mostly wandering around with uh, with other characters, talking, and then gathering resources. In all honesty, that's what most of this game is. Oh, and, uh, and also with the combat, like, they do do other stuff, like Roderick being able to just kill people outright, but once again, that just deals with enemies. It doesn't deal with the actual stealth. Honestly, that's like about it for the gameplay. Um, there's, like, th this game's gameplay doesn't have much to it, honestly. That said, let's go ahead and go to the, um... Actually, you know, before I move on to the other two subjects, I feel the need to put chapter 15 and 16 in their own thing. And 17, actually. Chapter 17, I will write off. Unless, until... Okay. I'm going to write it off. I would just criticize it outright, but it might have something to do with the Requiem. So I'm not going to criticize it until the Requiem comes out and it's confirmed or not confirmed. Chapter 15 and 16, though, gameplay-wise, actually narrative-wise too, but I'll get there when I get there, have big fucking issues with. Uh, my my problem gameplay-wise has to do with the Nicholas thing, but I've already, I've already explained that. Like I said, this is the part of the gameplay. I've already explained my problems with killing Nicholas... So I will just say that, you know, the, killing Nicholas is retarded. But I did not get to touch on chapter 16. The entirety of 16, but especially the part where you're hiding behind that thing when Roderick dies, is completely fucking asinine. Here's why I hate, 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 loathe, whatever word you want to use. That, like that particular vehicle part made me livid. Here's why. This game works best when it's just kind of doing it. This game doesn't really have any exploration, but it works best when it's doing its meandering and when it's doing its stealth-oriented combat. That's what this game is its best at. What did Chapter 16 do? Chapter 16 did exactly what I think it was Chapter 5 did in It Takes Two, if you're familiar with that game. It put an emphasis on the combat. But not only did it put an emphasis on the combat, it did not put an emphasis on the stealth. And like the, this game, as far as like if this game works decently in a game, it needs more stealth options. But as far as the combat part of it goes, it works well enough. You're given enough upgrades over time. You get um, the sleepiness, which if you upgrade it, you can throw it into the sling. You can kill people by hitting with a rock. For guys with helmets, you can hit the helmet off and hit him in the face. That's all fine. But that that shit only works well in tandem with stealth. Chapter 16 throws the stealth element out the window. Half the fucking time, the motherfuckers already know where the fuck you are. So you have limited shit to do. Oh, and, and, oh, and shit like Roderick's thing only worked during stealth too. So you got what? You got the shit to get some, you got rocks, which only work on guys without helmets, with most, which most guys have fucking helmets. You got extinguished with the rats. But here's the thing though, that takes time. And time is one thing you don't have when you have jerk-offs fucking running at you with swords over their fucking heads ready to kill you. And then same thing with the, with the thing to take their helmets off their heads. It takes two hits. You can knock the helmet off their head, but once that's done, somebody else has already fucking killed you. That's my main fucking issue with Chapter 16, and it's exemplified with the fucking vehicle where Roderick dies. It expects you to do the combat without the stealth. There is This game does not have enough going for it with the combat to do it without stealth. And that is my problem with it. Okay, I'm gonna rate this whole- I'm gonna give this whole game a rating, but I'm gonna give a grading right now to chapter 16 alone, gameplay-wise, because the fact that they have you do combat without the assistance of stealth, which is not- the, this game does not give you the mechanics to perform well with combat without stealth, which is why it took me probably 30 plus fucking times to get past that part, 
and took and other people didn't even fucking finish it. Which is why I say it's a complete failure of game design. If you're gonna have that if, if for chapter at the beginning of chapter 16, they should have included mechanics that help with combat outside of stealth. I mean, chapter 16 doesn't even barely give you stealth options. They should have given you better a uh, 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 mechanic to do combat without stealth. That would have made chapter 16 fine, but they didn't. So for chapter 16 by itself, I give that chapter 16 straight the fuck up. I give it an F minus, straight up. Here's how my grading works. I don't do that. I, I don't. I know there there, there are tiers things where it goes, you know, D, whatever, S tier. I don't do that shit because honestly, I think it's stupid. Why? Because there's no F, so it just makes things feel better about themselves. I go through the regular like school grading system, F to A, or I guess F minus to A plus. F to A, A for awesome, F for fuck you. Chapter 16, I give that an F minus straight the fuck up complete failure of game design the whole fucking thing gameplay wise now let's move on to let's move on to the narrative next narrative wise this game is a slam dunk um for the most part so it has so it shows the horrors as far as i know of the black death it goes fantasy with all this blood shit being able to control the rats or whatever, but I'll forgive that, you know, because it, like, it's, it's historically accurate enough as far as I know. It shows the horrors of the Black Death. It's a compelling narrative about a 15-year-old and a 5-year-old meeting up with some other miners to sit there and travel through what they're doing. I do view the Beatrice fake-out death thing to be kind of cheap, but at the same time, I can forgive the game because they only did it once. It's kind of cheap, but it, you know, I'll forgive it. Overall, the build, I like this game's narrative. Um, the 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 main thing I'll say about it, I, I would go into further details, but I've already critiqued or praised the other narrative parts of it during the playthrough. So, but I will I give will give one aspect of it though, and once again goes back to chapter 15, six, chapter 16. I still don't like the Hugo thing, how they just turned Hugo. Um, I, j I simply don't buy it. The fact that Amis, he got so pissed off at Amis at the point where he nearly killed her because he lied to her. She shouldn't have lied to him. But like, I'm, I get that his mother's life is on a line. And that's why I get why he didn't kill Nicholas right away, but like it was still a bit ridiculous. Having the thieves though, the thieves was fine. The Emily and whatever the fuck the other guy's name is, Arthur. I think they were both well done enough. I kind of wish they were fleshed out more, but they weren't. It's fine. They'll probably return to the sequel. Roderick was done well enough. They had his moment with the shop right before he died, which its impact was that his its impact was destroyed. Um, I won't shit on the narrative quite as much for Chapter 16 as the gameplay. The ending was very anticlimactic, but I get the, the reason why is because. They're setting up Requiem, so I won't shit on that. Same with the same with the Epilogue, Chapter 17. I won't shit on that either for the same reason. I do enjoy the interactions though between Hugo and Amicia, and the other parts of it were fine too. Honestly, I don't have much to say specifically about the narrative, um, other than to say that I did like it. That's pretty much all I have to say about the narrative. Honestly, there's not much else to say. I already went over all the main points. For the presentation, maybe there'll be something to say later on, but for the presentation now, what do I mean by presentation? I mean like graphics and just the overall way things are presented. The, as far as atmosphere goes, the game didn't go as far as it could have with immersion, but I won't blame it for that. Like I'm not gonna dock at points for that. Maybe they didn't think of it or something, I don't know. But for what it has, the atmosphere is good. The graphics are great. The water effects are great. It has a little bit of 3D audio. Not as good as it could be. But then again, my the my personal audio isn't built for it, so who the fuck knows? I mean, as far as any viewers concerned, it won't matter anyway, because one thing I'm learning is through the medium, because I'm editing the medium currently, is that the three, you, you can't even hear the 3D audio through a video. So like straight up, with a game like this, to some degree, and like the medium, you're not getting the full experience by watching it. You gotta play it yourself in order to get the full experience. Sound design was great. 
Um, everybody looked realistic. Uh, the graphics were among absolutely phenomenal. The way things are presented, um, the fact that the Inquisitor's doing his shit. I don't know what the fuck, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of rambling here. Just know that I enjoyed the presentation. The presentation was probably the best part, the, 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 one of the best parts. And it's including the presentation of how they portrayed the Black Death. So, I know this is a bit short, but I think that's about it. <laughs> um, let me give myself 30 seconds in case I want to add anything. <laughs> Already, I have something to, uh, to add in. And it's about the narrative for the 30 second thing. I'm not going to count this towards the overall grading because I don't think it's important enough, but I thought I'd mention it. So, and it's one, actually, one is about presentation, one's about narrative. So as far as the presentation goes, and it ties directly into the narrative, I do think it's a fantastic thing that they showed how decrepit everything got because of both the rats and because of the the, Grand In the Inquisition. Because the rats, how the fuck they burrow out of the goddamn ground is beyond me, but the fact they do, they do a damn good job in showing how badly shit gets with it. With it. Even like in this main menu, that, that shit off to the right, I imagine that half that is like literal rat shit, right? They show they do a good job of showing how desperate the times are because of the plague. And that also ties directly into the narrative thing. As far as, you know, the Inquisition forcing people out of their towns or those that they get the death penalty. Here's the only thing I would I would wish though. So this game's narrative is focused on Hugo and his Makula or whatever the fuck it's called. But I do wish they would have gone a bit deeper into the Inquisition's response to the plague, right? Like, I wish there would have been- I, I wish there was a little bit more about the Inquisition's efforts, even if it was selfishly motivated, to get the people out, right? Because you get that in this game, but it only serves as background material. I wish there was at least a minor plot point, at least for part of the game, that was about that. The, the, the Makula thing, or whatever it's called, very fantastical. But like, I wish they would have made it, even if it was minor, I wish they would have made an actual plot point, the Inquisition's part in getting out of there. Or hell, even just follow a small group of people for a little bit who were trying to get out. Um, you follow the thieves, but they follow directly in line with what Hugo said anyway. Why do I wish they would have had it being a bigger part rather than just a background? To make it more historically accurate, honestly. Because like if you if you if they would have given more focus to the, like to the actual plague, like you see it all around you, yes, and they do a good job of showing it. But I wish the plot actually revolved around it to some degree. Because the plot doesn't revolve around it; it revolves around Hugo, basically. So that's that's my thing. I I, I wish that the game would have given more attention to actually making part of the core the plague itself, instead of just Hugo's blood thing. So that's it. Um. But presentation-wise, they did do a good job on how everything looks. You know, the 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 corpsed up battlegrounds and all that. They did a good job with all that. Just wanted to add that in. So there you go. Back to the regular review. So that's pretty much everything, though. Um, that I didn't already cover in the regular gameplay, or bitch about, or praise, or whatever. Once again, gameplay does fine enough, except for chapter 16, which is a piece of shit. Um. The boss battle for Chapter 16 was actually well done enough. Um, it was about, like, it, it was pretty much what it, the boss battle was adequate. It did what it needed to do. The game set it up where it was basically rats versus rats, and it's exactly what the game gave you. And they made some rats black and some rats white to differentiate it, which I appreciate, because otherwise it would be impossible to beat. Yeah. So with that being said, let me go ahead and give this game a, a grading. So technically I'm going to give this game two gradings, so I'm going to give it one including chapter 16 and one excluding chapter 16. Because chapter 16 was just garbage. Without chapter 16, without it, I'm going to give this game a B plus. Why a B plus? Because the narrative served itself well enough. The presentation did, it's mainly the gameplay that bogs it down to a B plus. Even without the chapter 16. Because the fact that it doesn't upgrade anything as far as stealth goes. Now, I don't expect the most elaborate shit in the world, because once again, it, it is just a 15-year-old with a 5-year-old with all that. Here's my thing, and here's, here's what would have been a perfect way to do it. 
when Melly and Arthur are introduced, because they're thieves. So they could have easily said, hey, we have better ways of being stealthy, let's go ahead and do this. Just saying. Like, and add another mechanic or two. That's how you could have done it. So, the lack of better stealth for some parts, like to make it, just to make the overall gameplay more innovative, and also the lack of a mechanic to make combat viable without stealth, it's in, in general, for chapter 16. Not including chapter 16, I'll give this game a B plus. Now let's go ahead, let's go ahead and include chapter 16 because of how shit it was. Chapter 16, <laughs> this one's different. Because of how bad the gameplay is, I give this game a C plus with chapter 16 gameplay. Here's why. Other people stopped playing this game because of that part. Like I said, I played that one part for an hour and a goddamn half. And I don't know how many fucking times I failed it. Must have been at least a hundred. I'll count when I actually did this shit. Um, I mean, even then I can only count like a third of it. Because I stopped recording that part like a third of the way in. So there's no way to actually get an accurate count. But it must have been at least 70,000. Must have been at least 70. To have a portion... It brings it down to a C+. Plus. May, fuck. C+, plus, maybe even just a regular C. Because why oh why... Would you include a, a part in a game that the gameplay is not built for? I just don't understand that. I... Uh, whatever. So, without ch without the bullshit of Chapter 16, B+. Plus, with the bullshit of Chapter 16, C. So, there we go. That's my grading for this game. So, it, was, it, it, it could have done better, but it was pretty good. If you include chapter 16, it was a piece of shit. But I'm not going to include chapter 16. So, my rating for this game is a B plus. Because I'm just going to I'm gonna choose not to include chapter 16. Because fuck chapter 16 and everything it stands for. So with that being said though, um, yeah. That's about it. I've already given it 30 seconds. So, uh, this will be it. It was a good enough experience. I'll play Requiem whenever I get a chance to, whenever it comes out, and that's it. This has been a Plague of Tale Innocence. Um, catch you later.